Good evening, good evening, good evening, my brothers and sisters. Come on in, come on in. It is dinner time. It's time to be fed some good soul food that's good for your soul. So come on in, come on in. Your brother Tony has got a good hot meal for you. So come on in and sit down at the dinner table. We got a good topic this evening. And I would like for you, brother and sister, if you have any comments to make during at the dinner table, by all means, I want you to express yourself express your thoughts about the topic that we are going to talk about that's on the menu. If this is your first time at the dinner table, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tony M. Toomer, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationship basically from a biblical point of view. What do I mean by a biblical point of view? I believe strongly when you go to the book of Genesis, uh, God had a unique relationship first with the man, Adam. Uh, after he'd established that uh, unique relationship with the man, Adam, he called the deep sleep to come upon Adam. He reached into Adam's side. Then he closed the wound. He stepped uh, to the side while Adam was uh, asleep and he formed the woman. After he formed the woman, he had a unique relationship with the woman. Then he represented the woman to the man. And in the presence of God, the man, Adam, said, bone of my bone flesh of my flesh i should call a woman because she came from man now that's the position i come from my brother and sister and that's the position that uh god come from because uh that's how he established the human race and with that and if you have a another thought about a relationship my brother and sister i still encourage you to sit here at the dinner table and get some of this good soul food because you can benefit from it and with that said, my brother and sister, we're about to look on the menu for tonight, and I hope that you have an appetite to feed your soul. We are going to embark on the topic, how to be a priority and not an option. There are seven powerful steps that works, okay? Again, listen to how you doing, Sister Teresa Thomas. Welcome to the dinner table. I see you, John Hancock, down there. How you doing, Sister Park? I see you, John Hancock, down there. Okay, Sister Parker, I will tell Cinderella hello. But right now, Sister Parker, she not that. She already been fed and she not that. Uh, but thank you anyway, sisters. Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister. We're about to talk about and we want and I want to share uh what's on the menu. By the way, how you doing, Auntie? How you doing, Auntie Davis? Uh, by the way, my brother and sister, I want to encourage you while we're talking at the dinner table, if you want to talk to other people at the table by all means you can uh, talk to your brothers and sisters long you stay on the topic that we're talking about okay so i don't mind that because that's what family do we sit at the dinner table and we um talk about certain uh topics at the dinner table so those of you that are coming in how to be a priority not an option and there are seven powerful steps that works okay now when it comes to priority my brother sister when it comes to a relationship even god has a priority and what is the priority when you look in god's word it say that god is the head of christ which means christ have to acknowledge god then it say christ is the head of man which means man must uh acknowledge christ then it said that the uh, man is the head of the woman, which means the woman has to acknowledge the man. And that means the man that the woman is in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship with, okay? So we're talking pri about priority. And when we look in the dictionary, let me read to you, my brother and sister. Some of you, you have a good idea of what priority is, but let's be more precise and specific on what the word priority means. When we look in the dictionary, priority is defined, my brothers and sisters, as the right to, to take precedence or to provide where or proceed before others. Again, it is to take precedence or to proceed before others. That's what priority is. So my brother and sister, when it comes to relationship, uh, if brother and you sister, if you mentally decide to be in a serious relationship, if you verbally commit to the relationship so the other party can know where he or she's staying and you move towards the, the engagement which should convert to marriage or your marriage you have to understand that as a priority 
if a man or woman gets to the step of being um in a covenant relationship that man and woman must acknowledge god as the head of their relationship after god a man should be the top priority towards the woman after god the woman should be the top priority of the man that's how it go when it comes to a relationship however we are going to talk about how in a relationship there are some men that are not seeing what they top in the priority list of the woman and then there are some women that see that they're not the top of the priority list for the man now why is this now my brother and sister people in general aren't able to change their basic characteristics because especially is their fleshly mind again my brother and sister listen carefully basically people they aren't able to change characteristics the only way a man and woman could change characteristic for the better is not for sister not for you to uh, change for the man because you can't really change for the man and brother you cannot really change for the woman in order for a man and woman to actually have a legitimate change in his or her life that man and woman must have the spirit of god which is christ in them that's the only way a man and woman could be positive with a positive life change when the spirit of god come in it in him or her now what does fleshly mean when we look in the dictionary the word fleshly is defined or relates to the human desire or bodily appetite is sensual so that what fleshly mean it is defined or related to the human desire of body appetites and sensual so you got to understand it my brother and sister when it comes to priority you have to have the spirit of god to teach you guide you and show you how to have priority when it comes to relationship because relationship my brother and sister that's the most important thing here on this earth not things but relationship but when it comes to a man and a woman brother and sister you got to understand you must not put yourself in a situation where that man or woman treats you as an option it's either you are you are there or you're not you can't be complacent my brother you can't be com complacent my sisters to see whether or not that man or woman is going to come around it doesn't work that way so you my brother and you my sister you have to demand to be in the proper place on that man or woman priority life list if you do not that man or woman naturally or fleshly minded they are not going to have you on the top of their list it may appear that they have you on the top of their list but most men do not have a woman at the top of his list and most women does do not have a man at the top of the list sister parker said that's right god said if you abide in me i abide in you you have to allow the word of god to change us that's right so in order for a man sister a man does not change for you you understand a man does not change for you and brother a woman does not change for you not for the better how you doing mother welcome to the tonight dinner table thank you mother so you got to understand it so brothers in order for you to you you can demand to be on the top of the woman but she got the spirit of, if she doesn't have the spirit of god it's no way you could be close to the top after god that is and vice versa or uh, sister uh in order to be on the top of that the list for that man he has to have the spirit of god because he doesn't know no man or no woman come into this world with a blueprint or priority no man or no woman the only way you could know what true priority is you could look at it from your mother your father or people that got the spirit of god but you really don't know until you have a relationship with god when you have a relationship with god you understand your purpose why are you here you understand who you what i mean by that your purpose is who you are why are you here and where you and where you're going that's what it means my brother and sister now listen carefully when you enter into a serious committed and covenant relationship you all remember the great poet Maya angelo right you can't fool yourself my brother and sister never fool yourself now what did the great poet Maya angelo say and you all familiar with it 
she is quoted and making the following a statement Maya Angelou she said when someone shows you who they are believe them the first time you got to understand it, my brother and sister. When a man and a woman show you who he or she truly are, believe them the first time. You got to take off the old roll, the roll colored glass, and my brother and sister. And you can't go by your feelings when it comes to a person. You got to go by facts. And when God is in you, He's going to allow you to see who those people are. Now, not only did my Angelo make a statement when someone showed you who he or she is, believe the first time, we could go a little deeper and we could get a little more true to it. Even as it is written in Matthew 7, 1720, again, that's Matthew 7, 1720, Matthew chapter 7, 1720, Jesus, the Lord is doing the talking now. This is what Jesus said. Even so, every good tree bear good fruit. But a bad tree bears um, bad fruit. A good tree, my brother and sister, cannot bear bad fruit. No way it can. Nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. No way it can. Every tree, my brother and sister, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, listen what Jesus said. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Not only did we get it from Maya Angelou, we got it from the Lord Jesus himself. Jesus used the illustration of a tree, and Maya Angelou, she was showing you uh, something similar to a tree. My brother and sister, you got to understand that that person that you, quote unquote, supposed to be in a relationship with, he or she going to bear fruit. It's either going to be good or bad. It's not no mixture, because God, Jesus said himself, a good tree does not bear bad fruit. And a bad tree does not uh, bear good fruit. You know why? Because you have to go to the root. And, and what is the root? The root is the soul of that man and woman. Their mind, their will, and their emotion. Whatever in a man, sister, brother, whatever in a woman, it's going to manifest itself. But you got to understand, my brother and sister, when it comes to be, when that man and woman get manifested, you got to stop getting fleas. Some of you brothers and sisters, you allow these men and women to give you fleas. What do I mean by fleas? I mean, they give you red flags. And you know what fly, fleas do? They are irritating. They're very little, they're very little, and they jump around and they, very, they will cause you to scratch. And when I said that will cause you to itch, and that's what these men and women, these narcissist men and women do, they cause you to itch, which means they cause you to be uncomfortable. So you got to stop lying to these people to get, uh, give you fleas. Now, again, those of you that at the dinner table tonight, the topic is how to be the priority, not an option. And I'm about to give you seven powerful steps that work. Number one, my brother and sister, number one, if you're reaching out, making all the contact to that man or woman, stop. Stop today. If you are the one that's doing all the contact, stop today. What do I mean by that? I mean, if you're doing all the, I'm talking primarily to you, bro, you single brother, single sister, and that even some married people that do the same thing. But if you, brother and sister, if you're doing all the calling, if you're doing all the texting, if you're doing all the reach out, stop today. That man or woman, they needs to uh, equally put in what you're doing. The scales need to be balanced. The scales shouldn't be like this. You do you you carrying the heavy weight and that individual not doing nothing. So my brother and sister, if you're doing all the input, stop today. And when you stop today to prove whether that man or woman is interested in you, he or she eventually going to see that you have changed what? Your pattern and behavior. Because that individual that got the fleas, they get accustomed to you doing everything. So they get complacent and they get lazy. So stop today. Number two, 
when it comes to a priority not being an option. If And this goes by the contact. If you have to wait a long period of time before you get a response from that man or woman, stop it today. If you notice this, when it comes to the Sister Reset, brother, what was the first scripture? The first scripture of uh, Sister uh, Teresa, it was Matthew 7, and that's uh, 1720. Again, that's Matthew 7, 7, 20, 7, 20, 7, chapter 7, 1720. Jesus was doing the talking of uh, Sister Teresa. He said, even so, every good tree bear good fruit, not a bad tree. Because the bad tree, it bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit, it is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you shall know them. So Jesus is talking about what's come out of man, man or woman's heart. Whatever is in a man or heart or mind, it's going to manifest itself. It's going to manifest itself either verbally or non-verbally based on the action. Because every man and a woman, my brother and sister, have what is called a pattern and behavior. We all have pattern and behavior. That's just like when someone commit a crime. The, po the FBI, the law enforcement, they have what is called profiles. They have profile of be pattern and behavior. And they could kind of narrow it down to the sex of the individual that have committed a crime, they could kind of narrow it down to the um, the color of the person. They can narrow it down to the income level. That's just how precise forensic uh, is, okay? But back to the topic, we're on number two. If a person have you waiting for a long period of time before they respond to your contact, stop it today. What do I mean by that? When a man... There are some men and women, when they contact you, they want you to respond just like that. These are narcissist individuals. But, and they want you to, when they call you, they want you to pick up the phone just like that. When they text you, they want you to respond just like that. Because these people that do you like this, these are takers. They want something from you. If you... Have any of you brothers and sisters ever know that if you've been dealing with a member of Optus 6, when you've been doing all the contacting and they really don't contact you until, and it and it kind of take you, it kind of blow you away. What do I mean by that? When you see they, they are name or something on your phone or you see them texting, you're saying, wow, this is strange. He or she never really contact me. It must be something that he or she wants. Majority of the time, it is what that man or woman wants. So when that person does not contact it, now we understand that a man or woman, they may have to work. We understand that. They could be tied up. But not until a, a, a whole bunch of hours go by, even if a man or woman have an eight-hour job full time. You mean to tell me, if you call or text that person within eight hours, he or she cannot respond to you, especially if he or she say that they have a relationship with you. That's a bunch of crap because basically uh, when we talk about the West world, the United States of America, if someone have the standard 40 hours a week or work eight hours, that person going to normally have um, two 15 minute breaks and an hour lunch. So you mean to tell me that person cannot respond to you on a 15 minute break is two that's that actually 30 minutes in itself or an hour break why can't he or she not respond to you and have you noticed in my brother and sister and i have said this before like if you run that person because most of the time since majority of people have cell phone majority of the time that cell phone going to be close to that person now some of you could be a witness to this some of you could be a witness. Have you and how you doing, Sister Yolanda? Uh, welcome to the dinner table. Some of you could uh, re, uh relate to this. Have you noticed when that man and woman be around you, and when their telephone ring, they respond to it quickly, but they supposed to be having quality time with you. 
And if they have quality time with you, but yet they can uh, answer the phone, but they supposed to have quality time with you. Have you ever noticed these people when they get a text in, they look at the text and they may say, hold on for a moment and they respond to the text. But you supposed to, they supposed to be having quality time with you. Now just take the, remember my brother and sister, some of you can relate to this. Now the same thing. Most of the time, that person going to have that cell phone close to him, right? Have you noticed this? When he or she is not around you, it's not the same. Now, you ever know that it's not the same? And when they do you like them, my brother and sister, that tells you that you are an option. You're not a priority. Those people that call them and text them, whether it's family or friend, they have they're more on the priority list or that person's life than you are. So why so some of you may say, Well, why he or she around me? Because it's something that he or she wants from you. Are they bored? or they bored and they find time to put you on their schedule? I'm gonna tell you this, my brother and sister. Do not allow a man or woman to, to put you on a schedule. Once you start allowing a person to put you on schedule and he and she in a relationship with you, you you doing it to yourself. Have you ever noticed this, my brother and sister, too? When they put you on a schedule, it's not when they co contact you or you talk to them. If you reach out to them, it's a different story. But when they reach out to you, it got to be on their terms. You know what I mean? How you doing, Sister Deborah? Welcome to tonight's dinner table. Now, number three, my brother, so those of you that are coming in, tonight's on the menu is how to be a priority, not an option. And I'm giving you seven powerful steps that work. Well, on number three, my brothers and sisters, this not, this not only go for men, this go for women too. Stop being an ATM machine. Stop being that man and woman ATM machine. Some of you brothers and sisters, this person could have a job or get income. He or she play with their money and waste it. Then they come to you to, to drain you of your money. They'll come to you as far like they, they'll say they need. That's the word they're going to most of you, they need. So they don't, they don't care about you. They don't care whether or not you have to pay a bill or whatever. They don't care. Long as you, they extracting from you to do something separate for his or herself. These type of individuals, these narcissist type of individuals, these people are me, myself, and I type of people. And you notice when you bail them out, and when it's time for you to uh, really legitimately need something, they can't help you. Something always come up, and this is what they say. Some of you all can relate to this. I wish you would have uh, got to me sooner because I, I had to do this. They'll do you like that. But when they contact you and they are in need or get into your ATM machine, you find a way to help them, even if you have to take a loss. And some of these, uh, some of these people that you're in a relationship with, they may even use the word borrow it. That's right. They may use the word borrow. But I'm telling you this, my brother and sister. Now, this is very tricky. When if this man and woman in your life and he's not your husband and, or she's not your wife, I'm telling you this very carefully. If that man and woman said, loan me some money, if you decide to loan him or her some money, Put it in your mind that you may not get it back. If he or she not responding to you regularly, what makes you think he or she going to keep that word? Because you sure learn something when you're doing all the contact anyway. You should understand something when they get in contact with you when they, they want something, but they'll use the word need. You should understand. But no. You keep letting these people put these fleas on you and you, and you still itching, right? You still itching. And you know it's wrong. 
So as of today, stop. Why you got to wait? Why you got to go into another day? Why don't you stop now? Sister Parker said, I stopped doing that mess. I tell people now I don't carry cash. I only carry plastic. Amen. So if that man or woman that you're in a relationship with and you decide to give them the loan for money, when they use the word loan, this is what you do. What you do is help write you up a little contract. You, you haven't been doing it, right? They're accustomed to getting stuff from you. But when you say, okay, I do this, but I want you to sign a piece of paper. When you say you're going to pay me back? When? When you're going to pay me back? And you put that on the contract. And you put the date. And you put, and you have a little line where they sign their name. And then you're going you're gonna to flush them out. They may get pissed off at you. Because then they'll throw something in your face like, you don't trust me? Why should you trust them when they ain't paid you back the other money that they said they were going to borrow? Or they forgot. And some of these guys that you're interested in, so that you're in a relationship with, so you say, and brother, some of these women that you say you're in a relationship with, have you noticed if you didn't sign the contract, when it comes time for pay up and you probably got a bill or something to pay and you reach out to them and they don't answer the phone or they or they don't respond to a text and you just so happen to go to social media and you see that they on social media and they just put like some and then you may DM them since they're not answer the phone or They'll not answer the tip and they won't respond to your DM. And they'll let time go by. And then they'll come up with some kind of crap, some kind of crap that they used on you before. Stop it today. Number four, you do all the planning. You do all, he or she never planned nothing. You don't know whether they're going to show up or not. You don't know. They're very flaky. They, he or she sign like, okay, they're on board with the idea. And more than likely, you paying for it. I know this lady. I know this lady, my brother and sister. Check this out. I know this lady. And it was a long, it was a like a long distance relationship. Check this out. This guy, she lived in another state. And she came to visit this guy, right? She came to, she, she flown from her state to another state to visit that guy. The guy agreed to pick her up at the airport. She got on a plane came to his state when she landed she talked to him while she was at the airport in her state when she got off the, the plane he was supposed to be at the airport to pick up she called he didn't pick up the phone continuously she did he didn't pick up the phone she texted him he didn't respond she was at the airport for hours it just so happened she had family members in that particular city. So she went and spent she went and spent the night with them and she got on the next plane going back to her state. A few days later, this guy reached out to her. And when he reached out to her, he gave he said that he had to do something for his mother. He said, This is what he said. Something came up. I had to help my mother. So came up. I can't talk to you about it. Can you imagine that? Plans. Sister Park said, thanks for treating you. I hope your day was the same. Glad you made it too. Okay, thank you. She talking to Sister Yolanda. But you see, let me tell you this. Um, when you doing all the planning, 
That's right, Auntie. All that line. When you're doing all the planning, and here she never planned nothing. You getting fleas. You when you gonna stop get letting these fleas jump on you? You still itching, right? You you still itching, right? You still when you gonna learn? Why am I saying fleas? Because that man or that woman is dogging you out. How you doing, sister? After working to the dinner table, they keep dogging you out, and while they dogging you out, they leaving fleas on you. When you gonna stop? You need to stop today. Number five, you are transparent. You are open. You are you open with that person, but that person is not open with you. That person is very secretive. Some of you can relate to this. Why is it he or she know a lot about your life and you really don't know much about his or her life? Why? Sister Ephraim said, learning something new, fleas because they dog you out. That's right. They be dogging you out. That's why you people get these fleas. So again, why are you so open with that man or woman? Let's 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 ponder that. Let's say, self, why am I so open to this person? Why does he or she know so much about me? but I know very little about him or her. Why is it I feel like I'm a dentist, like I got to pull teeth to get information? That's right, Auntie, and, they, they are, and they'll add, and then they'll change the subject. Amen, they sure will. That's right, catfish fishing. That's right, Sister Teresa. Why is it? Thank you, Sister Yolanda. But do you know when a person is very secretive, what that tells you about him or her? He or she is hiding something, but yet they're supposed to be in a relationship with you. You see, when it comes to a relationship, my brother and sister, it has to be transparency. I, I didn't say 100% transparency. Because you have to grow into that. You have to grow. And how do you grow? You have to respect. And when and then you have to trust that person. That's what, what happened. You have to learn to trust that person. Why is it that person know where you stay at? Some of you brothers and sisters, the man or woman know where you stay at, but you have an idea where he or she stay at. Some of you, I, I, I think know what I'm talking about. And it's sad to say, my sisters, a lot of you put yourself in that situation. The man always coming to your house or something, but you, you never can go to his house. You never can. You barely, if they have a job outside of their home, you barely know where they work. You barely know what he or she does. Why? Why is it when you ask him or her a question, they get agitated? Why is it when you say something like, we've been dating for 10 years. And I mean, we've been dating for 10 years. And yet, I don't know you. I don't know nobody in your family. Why is it we've been dating consistently for 10 years? I don't know none of your friends. Why is it we've been dating for 10 years? And we don't we don't go nowhere. You, you just come to my house or I just come to your house. Why is it when we go out, we go way out? 
and we in the and we in the same city, but we go way out. Why is that? Why is it when I when I tell you I'm going on a trip and I tell you when I'm going and when I'm going to be back? Why is it you don't tell me you're going on a trip? I have to find out about it when I see you on social media taking a picture. And you out of the country. I noticed that. You know, I noticed that when I be, when I be out of town or something, I might I call you to see what's going on, even though I'm out of town. Why is it when you was out of town, you didn't tell me? And why is it when I called you, you didn't answer the phone? Why is it when I text you, you didn't respond? By the way, why is it a lot of time when you don't respond, you say that? Your, your battery died in your telephone. Why? Because he or she been giving you fleas. Dogging you out. When it going to register? Ooh, I'm, I'm still itching. When is it going to register? Number six. You beg for quality time. Why do you have to beg that person to see you? Why? He or she always say, I love you. I love me some you. I love me some you. Why is it they only tell you they love you when you're in the bed? Why they tell you they love you when they need something? You ever notice that they tell you they love you when they get something from you? You ever notice that? And it's on their time. They, they schedule it. Why is it? Why? Why are you on their schedule? That right, Auntie Fly and Flea. Why is it? You shouldn't have to beg no man or woman to spend time with you. Sister Effie say, it's time for real talk because all this water and dying stuff just keep folks in bondage. Amen, Sister Ashford. It does. Quality time. When a man and woman is really into you, he or she, going to move you high up on the priority list and you going to get quality time. If that man and woman is serious with you, if that man and woman is committed to you, and especially if that man or woman is in a covenant relationship with you, covenant means marriage. There's nobody or nothing that come before your husband or your wife, but Jesus. If you got children, they don't come before you husband, your husband and wife. Your mom and daddy don't come before your husband and wife. Your siblings don't come before your husband and wife. Your job don't come before your husband and wife. It's only one thing or person, that's Jesus. Nothing go before Jesus, my married brother and sister. Some of you married brother and sister, you put other things and you chasing money. Some of you people put more into money. Now, don't get me wrong. You need money to survive. The Bible said money is a defense. Why are you chasing money? Why are you overextending yourself? Why are you trying to catch the American dream? If you're trying to get the American dream, my brother and sister, let me tell you about the American dream. I like being in this country. Notice I said I like being in the country. I didn't say I love this country because I love heaven. I like this country, but I love heaven that's supposed to come. I don't know what heaven looked like. The Bible say it have neither entered into a man heart and mind those things that God had prepared for them that love him. All, when it says streets of gold and stuff like that, 
You see, don't think it look, look like gold that when you go in the jewelry store, this is some more type of gold you ain't never seen. When it said pearls, and they talk about those white pearls, what you see. It is in some other type of pearls that we don't, we can't even comprehend what God got for us. When Jesus said to, he going to prepare a, a place for us, then he's going to come back and get us. And what Jesus said in his house, there are many mansions, right? The view, what you got of a mansion, my brother and sister, this is another type of mansion. It have not came to your mind or your heart what Jesus got in store for us. When you get to heaven, my brother and sister, you're going to be blown away in eternity. You're not going to get used to it. You're not going to get used to the splendor of being with God and Jesus. You're not going to, you're just going to be happy. You're not going to get used to it because it's going to blow you away. Like you get used to stuff here. It's just like here on earth, the American dream. You ever notice this, my brother and sister? And I'm not getting off the top. I'm trying to make a point. You ever notice this? When you buy a child a toy and they play with that toy for a while, right? And when they get finished with that toy, you done put a whole bunch of money in that toy, right? And when you put that money in the toy, you expect for him or her to play with that for a while, right? And they put it aside. How about this, sister? How about you buy your man this nice suit? You buy this man a nice suit. He wear it one time. And then he put it in the back of the closet. But you didn't put so much money in it. How about this? Brother, you bought that lady that designed and pocketbook. And she had it for a little while. And then she put it down and then she started, then she get a, she got another pocketbook. And you put a whole bunch of money in it. That's how it is on earth. Things, it wear out. Our interest in things is wear out. Everything that you can see and touch got a, a expiration date, my brothers and sisters. Well, Jesus, it has no expiration date. Put your affections on what is high, uh, up there with the Lord. That's what you're supposed to be striving for. You want quality time. Real quality time is going to come when Jesus comes. That's when you're going to get real quality time called that kind of quality time is called eternity. But before Jesus come and you're in a relationship with a man and a woman, why they can't give you no earthly quality time? What do I mean by earthly quality time? Put all that unnecessary stuff aside. Brother, what's more important to you? Your boys or your woman? Sister, what's more important to you? Your girls or your man? What did Gia Scott say on one of her songs? You are familiar with Gia Scott, the neo soul singer. I'm going to tell you some lines in one of her songs. You all may know the song that I'm talking about. Gia Scott told her girls, she said, you all know that I like to shake my things sometimes. But my man, and what about this, is this other chick? Her name is uh, it start with a Chanel or something like that. I think her name is Chanel. You all know what I'm talking about. She telling her girls that she just talk about this man. She used to be married to that guy that was on Different World, the Wayne Wayne. I think that's his name. You all know who I'm talking about now. That girl that he got married to. Uh, Shantae, Shantae, Shantae. She telling these young ladies that her man. That's what you call priority. Even though it's a song, that's what you call priority. Let me give you a situation. You see that lady right there? I always, I'm trying, you know, I, I get it wrong because I'm on camera and I got, there she is, that lady right there. The only person that come before her is God. Now, I love football. 
Football season is coming up. And she know I love football. I got this guy, we, we just like that, we friends. And his wife get him, get him some tickets to give to us from where she worked. And we be sent in the box. We be sent in the box eating all that good food and everything. The only thing we have to, I have to pay is just a part. But everything else come free. And she know that I like doing that. Like he'll call me like football season coming up. It's right here now. And he'll say, we're we going, we going to the football game. I said, cool. But when it come up to, to the football game and a good team come to town, he said, Tony, you ready to hit the road Sunday? I said, let me get back with you. And he respect that because he's married and I'm married. So what do I do? I You see that lady right now? Yeah, that lady. She's not my mama, but what do I do? I go to her and say, my boy, he uh, got some tickets to the game. Is it anything you want to do? You see, why am I saying is it anything you want to do? Because she more important than the football game. Even though I want to go to the football game, I have a desire to go to the football game, but the football game is one day. I did not marry no football game. I married her. And then what she mostly said, she said, go ahead and have a good time. And she does the same thing. One of her girlfriend might say, you want to do this to Quessa? You see her girlfriend called to Quessa. Called that, they don't mess up her name. But you all, some of y'all call her Cinderella because you don't don't miss her, her name. Just call her Cinderella. If you call her Cinderella, she'll say, hey, how you doing? Because when we be out sometimes, people say, hey, Tony and Cinderella, and she just be cheesing. But anyway, it's called respect and it's called acknowledgement. And that's what you have to do, brothers and sisters. You have to, and then you have to purposely put in quality time brother you should lead in putting in the quality time why do i say that brother you got to je operate just like jesus that right sister Alpha, is self selfless you have to operate like jesus what do i mean by operate like jesus jesus always wanted to spend time with him but Jesus also know that we got human relationship. Jesus don't, Jesus don't mind if you uh, spend time with your number two, long as you acknowledge him first, because Jesus is not number one. You brothers and sisters that are sit in a serious, committed, and covenant relationship, Jesus is number one. So you take care of Jesus first, meaning you spend quality time with Jesus first. Then your mate. Not nobody else. You spend quiet time with your mate. Then other people. That's how it goes. The world does not understand what I just said. What's important? Quality time with your friends or quality time with your mate? If your, if your friends be telling you like some of you sisters, some of your friends, would, they would say, your man is so controlling. He's so controlling. Why you can't hang with us? Those women that tell you that, sister, why you can't hang with us? Why he? Why y'all would have to be with him? They ain't got no man. Misery love company. Or they got a man. What well, they think they got a man, but they don't have a man because they don't even know where he at. Or they have a series of minions. And if you hang with them, you're going to be influenced by their bad behavior. What does the Bible say? Evil communication corrupts good habits. What does that mean? If if what whoever you hang with, they're going to influence you. What to say any of birds of a feather flock together? You don't want to flop 
Sister, if you're an eagle, why are you walking with chickens? Eagles do not hang with chickens. And the same thing, brother, if you tell these guys, look, I got to, I got to do something for my woman. And if they tell you, you blank fork, you all know what I mean. And they say, man, you just blank fork. Say, yeah, I, yeah, I am. I am. Now what? Sister, if you have a good man, he's going to be there with you when you need him before your girls. Brother, if you have a good woman, she's going to be with you before your boys. Example, let's say, brother, that you riding on the highway and the police pick you up by error and arrest you. And a lot of that happened. They arrest you. You go to the pokey. Is your guy friend going to come bail you out? No. Your woman going to come bail you out. Sister, I got a question for you. Say, for example, You have you have a I hope you all can uh, take what I'm about to say. Say, for example, sister, you have a problem in your digestive system. And you send on the and you go to the bathroom, right? And you can't pass. You know what I'm talking about, right? You can't pass. And you got a hard ball that blocking you from letting that stuff go, all that food go, right? Or your girlfriend's going to come to your house and move that little hard ball so that food can pass out of your system? No. If you have a good man, he will move that little hard ball and he better move it quick so he won't get the rest of it on his hand. That's what I'm talking about. Who got your back? Final thing. Are you a priority or are your option? Let's say that person go ghost on you. Do you know what I mean by going ghost? That he or she have a habit of disappearing. But he or she say, They was busy. When they finally contact you, they was busy. I have told you, brother and sister, this before. If a man or woman ever say, I was busy, or they tell you some crap, did you call me and they seen your number on the phone? Why would they say, did you call me? They seen your number. Why would they say, did you text me? But they seen the text. Why would they ask you that? Please, because they keep dogging you out. If you got someone that name is Casper, the friendly ghost, you need to leave Casper alone. You got a girlfriend, a boyfriend, they lay a name Houdini, you need to leave them alone. They pop it in and out, they do tricks. And then while they're doing tricks, they're going to gaslight you. What do I mean by gaslight? I ain't talking about paying your, your, your gas bill. Gaslighting is when they try to use that reverse psychology on you. They make it seem when you point out something that he or she is doing, he or she going to flip it around and make it seem like you crazy or you misinterpret it. But he or she is doing his or her thing. Never, brother, never, sister, be a man or woman's option because you got to do like Barney Fight, see, and you all remember Barney Fight, right? Barney Fight was Andy and his uh, sidekick on the Andy Griffin show. You know Barney that had the one bullet in his gun. 
But one thing Barney said that is legit. Barney said when he do his nose like this, he said, then you know how he be pulling his pants up. Barney said, you have to nip it in the bud. That's what you brothers and sisters have to do. When you see a man and a woman doing something, you got to nip it in the bud with the quickness. You don't give that, you don't let them build a foundation. You see, the foundation got to be on the rock or it's going to be on sand. How you build your relationship going to tell you about the foundation. If you got a shady person, you got a sandy person. And you got a strong, solid person, that, that's the rock. That right, Sister Teresa, nip it in the bud. You got to nip it in the bud with that one bullet. Everything that I just said, my brother and sister, as of today, especially if you're single, number one, you reach out to them too much to make contact. They don't do it. Stop it. Number two, you wait a long period of time for them to contact you. Stop it. You are the ATM machine, and when you need them, they never run. Stop it. You do all the playing and they don't do nothing. Stop it. You are transparent. They secret. They sneak it. Stop it. You bed for quality time. Stop, 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 stop. They ghost you. When they ghost you, tell them, I'm not into the supernatural. You playing, you playing the ghost. I don't play. What did Damon Whitney you say on Living Color? Homie don't play that. You said, homie don't play that. If you're a woman, say, Henrietta don't play that. You got homie don't play that. Stop getting fleas, my brother and sister. The dessert, as it is written in 1 Corinthians 11.3. 1 Corinthians 11.3. 1 Corinthians 11.3, it said, but I want you to realize that the head of every man, check it out, is Christ. The head of Christ is God. And the head of the woman is the man. Remember priority. Once you remember priority, it will navigate you in what is called a relationship. You don't have no time to play, my brothers and sisters. Anyway, what I'm planning on doing, my brother and sister, for dinner Sunday, for dinner Sunday, Um, I'm planning on having something special for you brothers and sisters for Sunday dinner. For Sunday's dinner, my brother and sister, this is what on the menu, unless I change it, but more than likely, this is on the menu for Sunday, Lord willing. Seven signs that a relationship is from the devil. You, you got that? For Sunday's dinner, that is my that is what I'm planning on cooking. 7 p.m. Sunday. Whatever time I, I'm going to put it out there. You know, a lot of time I put it out there. But that's what I'm intending on cooking for you, brother and sister. Seven signs that a relationship is from the devil. You don't want to miss that meal. So when you come to dinner Sunday, Make sure you're ready to take it in. Don't eat nothing now before that. I don't want nothing to, I don't want that no other stuff in you so you could take this good soul food in. Those of you that are on the book, like, share, make a comment. Those of you that are on the tube, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe, hit that notification button, like, make a comment. Thank you so much, brother and sister, for being here at dinner tonight. Guess what? I'm doing good tonight for dinner. It, we we we've been on just for an hour. 
So we about to go. Go ahead and take your food, my brother, sister, this extra food, share it with your family and friends. I got the kitchen. I'm going to do the cleaning up. Get your two pit. I hope that you enjoyed the meal. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Peace out.